says the wine would be spilled out, but not ruined. In other words, as I was as I was asking God, what does this mean? I believe this is the revelation that came through this. It it wouldn't be ruined, but it would be spilled out. In other words, it wouldn't be used for its intended purpose. Wow. There was a reason for the new wine put into the skin. But if you don't let God anoint you and soak you with some honey or make you new, die to flesh to make you new in the spirit, then your wine skin will not be able to handle the wine and it will break you. The wine will not be ruined, but it will not be used for its intended purpose. And its intended purpose is to be consumed and to alter who you are. Because if you think about wine in the natural, you consume it, and fermented wine alters who you are. You either become real happy, or you start putting holes in walls. Y'all are quiet this morning. Is this hitting somebody? So the wine was never used for its intended purpose because the wine skin did not allow God to mold it and make it or make it new or refresh it with honey. So therefore it spilled the wine out and it wasn't used for its intended purpose. And God spoke to me on Monday night in prayer and he said, I am preparing wine skins because I believe this. He wants to pour out some new wine that's going to consume some and alter some things but it has to be used for his purpose and not just spilled out on the floor and if he sends the wine before the preparation then the wine gets spilled out on the floor maybe some of the reason why we're in this season is because some of us won't allow God to prepare us we get excited when we hear the word of the promise and we get excited when the promise comes to fruition but there's a season in between them of preparation. And God says, I am preparing wineskins because I want to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall have visions and dream dreams. But i got to have a wineskin that's willing to hold it, that won't break under pressure, that won't break just because somebody starts gossiping about you, that won't break when the sin temptation comes. But we have something that is consuming because if you go into any kind of place that's serving wine, there's a certain kind of atmosphere. That's right. Yes, there is. Oh, yeah. It was intended to be consumed. But the Bible says the wineskins would be broken and ruined. Ruined means never be able to be used again. Come on. Hmm? Come on. That's what ruin means. Ruin means it used to have value, but now it's broken and has no value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, even, even if you want to be the person that says, you know what, I'm just not so sure about all this new wine, you can still have value because old wine skins still had value. Yeah. After, after the wine that was intended for them was used out, they would, they would anoint it, put honey on it, and they would put it back water in there to quench people's thirst. See, never is there ever in a time with God where you never become devalued. Yes. Now, God may kind of switch them things around. Yes, thank you. Huh? Yes. I'm going to show you here in a minute that God switches things around. God may start to turn things around, but you never become unuseful. Amen. Unless, unless, tell you, hit your neighbor in case they're sleeping, unless... Unless you're willing to change with the oil and the honey. Yes. yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. If you're unwilling to change with the oil and the honey, be careful. Because you look cute today, but you might be broke tomorrow. Come on. Amen. Come on. In Luke 5.39, you don't have to go there, you can just drop this down, is the point I made that Jesus points out that someone who likes old wine will not even try new wine, such as a person, such a person is satisfied with the old wine. Ah. Sometimes we don't even want the new that God has because we are so satisfied yeah. right. yes, there it is. with yeah. what God did yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Amen.
Pastor Appreciation Month. We've been having some wonderful dinners. People have been supplying us dinners, taking us to dinner, giving us gift cards for dinners. And when I fill up with that, I am satisfied. Yes. And even I, I get so much that even two, three hours later, Tim will say, you hungry? Oh, no. I had to go home and put sweats on just because I was so full. Everybody in this church knows you did that, that you ate so much at the buffet line that you had to go home and put PJs on. <laughs> and he would ask a couple hours later, are, are, you, are you still satisfied? I am still satisfied. Huh? Well, what in the world does that have to do? Sometimes we fill up on so much stuff. That's right. Right. Mm, um, sometimes we fill up so much on memories of what God used to do. That's right. Really come, on. Come, on. Come, in. come on. Come on. Yeah. Sometimes we fill up on God what did last year or two years ago that really we don't want nothing new because we really are satisfied because nothing's going wrong right now and we are come satisfied. On. Come on. And it's when you become satisfied yes. with the wine. The bag that the wine was put in used to extend and absorb the pressure and gases of the wine. But once the wine ferments and settles down, it sits there. Therefore, it becomes brittle and the vessel becomes satisfied with the contents of the wine. Come on. Right, right. Come on. So that when their wine is poured out, and if they try to put new wine, there's no more flexibility because now it's a new age of wine. Yeah. Oh, you don't know where I'm going with this. Come on. Come on. It's the same wine yeah. by the same vineyard. Come on. By the same wine press. It's just a newer wine. Just let that soak. That's going to hit you about 3 o'clock today. If I have to explain that, then go see Pastor Tim. He'll explain it to you. <laughs> what God revealed to me is important. The whole thing to note about wineskins. The reason it's important is because you didn't use wineskins when you were in the temple or when you were in the home. Right. In the temple or in the home, they would actually use pots. Most of the time, they were large pots. Remember when Jesus goes and he turns the water into wine at Canaan? Yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah. They were big ones, yeah. holding 60, 70, 100 some gallons. Yeah. They were large pots because some pots they used for ceremonial washing, some pots that they would take and dip into and pour out for drinking. So they were large pots, either glass or clay. So they didn't have to use these animal skin bags for, or for, their, for their vessels in the house or in the temple because they already had prepared large bags for that. The reason that they would use these smaller bags is they would take two of them and tie together or even sometimes four of them and tie together and tie them in a knot and they would hang them over the camel because they're in the desert and so most of their time when they would travel, they would use a camel. So they would take the wine skins, fill them up with either water or wine, tie them together so that they could hang hump of the camel. So can, now can you imagine this? If you're taking a four day trip and you're trying to take some glass jars on a camel Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Five steps on the hump of the camel and the jars are going to be falling out. That's the purpose. Yeah. The purpose wasn't to keep it at home, to keep it in the temple. The purpose was for travel. Because there would be there would be a, a clay of some sort, those pots. The purpose of wine skins would be for travel. So when God says, I am preparing wine skins, he's not talking about filling you up so you can look good in church. That's right. Right. That's right. Right. There are already vats here for you to come and do ceremonial washing. There are already vats here for you to come and get filled if you are thirsty. Whatever you need, there are already vats up here. There's a certain amount of presence that you can come in and you can receive what you need. But what you are supposed to do is if you have died and prepared a wineskin, you fill up the wineskin for travel. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. He's talking about preparing you with something new so that you 
take it outside. Yes. Amen. And too many of us, we want new wine and we want to get drunk in here. That's but as right. soon as we cross that door, we sober up yes. like that. Amen. We Preach want God's it. revival Preach spirit in here, but we don't want it out there. Amen. Come I'm on. not to get on that in a minute. Come I on. can't get too close to that. Turn with me to Mark chapter 8. Mark Amen. chapter 8. Normally I have all my scriptures typed out so I don't have to flip. Mark chapter 8. Look at this. Starting with verse 22. I'm going to read this through and then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And when they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus. And they begged him to touch the man and heal, and heal him. And Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, Can you see anything now? And the man looked around. Yes, he said, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly, for they look like trees walking around. First of all, we know this man, by this statement, hasn't always been blind, because for him to say men look like trees, he had to know what a tree looked like. And if a person had always been blind, I don't care how much bark they felt and how much explanation, they would not know what a tree looked like. So he had at once had his sight, but somewhere along the way, he lost his vision. Right. Come on. Keep that in mind. So the man says, yes, but I see people and I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again and the eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored. Come on. If he had never been able to see, he would have said he would have been well or whole or healed. But that's not what the word says. The word says, and he was restored. restored. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Look what he says here. And he could see everything clearly. And Jesus sent him away saying, don't go back into the village on your way. Je and, and then it goes on to a, another part where Jesus is, or where Peter is declaring that Jesus is Lord. But look at this little, little chunk of scripture here. Has powerful meaning. Has powerful meaning. First of all, you must know that Bethsaida was a small fishing village. That's why it says he was in Bethsaida and then a few verses down it talks about it being a village because it was a village. It was a small fishing village on the west side of the shore of Lake Gennesaret and village means the common place for inhabitants to return. In other words, people would go out in this particular section the people would go out and they would fish. The majority of them were fishermen of some sort. So they would go out to fish and then they would come back to the common place. They would come back to the village and inhabit there. That's where they would clean the fish. That's where they would prepare the fish or eat the fish. That's where they would live. So the village is known as the common place. Everybody say common place. Common place. But in verse 22, the Bible says the people wanted him healed, but they wanted Jesus to touch him. The man has been has never, hasn't always been blind, but something has happened for him to, to impair his vision. So the people are in the commonplace of the village. And they grab the man's hand, they bring him to Jesus, and say, Jesus, we will that you heal him. Could you touch him? And that seems like an appropriate question. That seems, you know, especially if they've heard about Jesus, they know he heals the sight of the blind, they know he opens deaf ears and he restores limbs. They have heard all these things, some of them may even witness, so now they see an impaired man with, vit with no vision, grabs him by the hand, brings him to Jesus, and said, can you heal him? Touch him. Yes. But notice Jesus' response. Come on. Jesus doesn't come up to him and just put his eyes and say, be healed. Read the verse. He did something before he spit on him. Look what it says. Huh. 